Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Today I'm going to talk to you about how you can feel like a millionaire in retirement, no matter what your income is. Now, I um, this is a topic that I absolutely love and I've got to thank our blogger Lisa Dunkel for um, putting this series forward. If you go to our articles on 60 and Me, you'll find several of her articles about living like a millionaire, feeling like a millionaire, um, you know, celebrating, uh, eating like a millionaire. And it's a whole series of beautiful articles about how to live in retirement. Um, um, you know, be like a millionaire mentally in your mindset, but um, be to do it on a retirement um, budget or income. So first things first, um, when you're retired and are approaching retirement, you start to really get this message that you've got to slow down a bit, <laughs> that you've got to start thinking about living either on a social security pension or your, off your IRA, your, your pension uh, profits, um, your investments, and realize that you've all your life you've been earning and the money's been coming in and then, or hopefully it's the case, and then and you know suddenly you're not having that paycheck come, uh, come in anymore. And if you've invested wisely and you've saved, then you're in a, a better position. But the point is here, you, I think there's a slowing down of buying stuff and and purchasing things when you get into your retirement age and just experiencing life in a different way you know more experience less stuff and even with little money I think that there's an argument that Lisa puts forward that you can feel like a millionaire now um the first thing I've got to say is um, I have no idea what a millionaire feels like or even looks like. <laughs> well, I, I guess you do. You, you know, you look at pictures of what they look like, but I have no idea what they feel like. And I think that, um, you know, thinking about money and whether it is the, you know, the source of all or the love of money is the source of all evil or whether, you know, you think that money is the enabler that's going to enrich your life and bring happiness into everything that you do, you know, whichever your po point of view, I actually don't have any concept of what it feels like to have a million dollars in the bank. But um, I do know that Lisa, you know, has looked at this and studied it and understands it. And, um, you know, has got some suggestions to offer because I think there's a feeling of maybe it's just contentment or uh, opportunity or, um, you know, capability or in, uh, what's the word, inspiration that comes from knowing that there's um, there's a backup for you, you know, that you can buy things if you really, really needed to or wanted to. And it just doesn't apply to stuff. It applies to health as well. So I think a lot of women in their 60s who are in, on a retirement budget don't want to be considered like a penny pinching older woman, you know, like just worried about money all the time. Like I can't buy that or I can't get that. You know, I, I don't want to, um, you know, use coupons or I don't want to go into, um, is it Ross's where you go in on a Tuesday and it's like the, you get a bargain price. But, you know, it's like things that make us feel like a millionaire, according to Lisa, don't have any, don't cost anything. Most of them don't cost anything. This is where it all happens <laughs> in your head. So I think it's uh, it's more of a, a, a sense of mindset shift. And that's what we want to talk about here. She talks about some things that give her an example of how feeling like a millionaire. And she says she always likes to shop like a French woman. Now, how does a French woman shop, you might ask? Well, I actually live in, in Switzerland, so I have gone to France many times and I do understand when she's talking about this. I, I totally get this because French women like women in Switzerland, like myself, don't have cars. And so we go on public transport a lot and or ride a bike or a motor scooter. And you don't, um, you know, you don't get like the Costco shop where you pile up the back of your car with, you know, 2000 pounds worth of uh, mayonnaise. Is that, is that, I'm just kidding, you know, Costco is great. I love it. But, um, you know, but you are shopping probably every day and or every other day. I mean, I shop about three times a week. And I have a very like rhythmic path. I guess I've gotten a little bit predictable in the types of food that I love, but I know exactly where I'm going. And I also know um, where to look for bargains how to, um, you know, not, not necessarily use coupons all the time, but how to take advantage if there is a coupon of picking up something that I know. We get these coupons in the mail from our two big shops at, um, in Switzerland, but you, I mean, you get the same thing, but you're being selective about it, like not being like, you know, worrying that you're not going to make it and miss that one penny saving, but, um, and just avoiding some of the silly things like, you know, two for ones and that kind of thing, which we know are not two for one savings. But anyway, the point is in France that women, do tend to have their little shopping bag and they do tend to go uh, to the shops with a consciousness of, I'm going to experience this shopping as a luxury experience. I'm going to look for just the right cut of meat or just the right avocado, or I'm going to say, I could get, you know, I could get a tin of passion fruit, but I'm going to buy a passion fruit and I'm going to you know, be inspired by the, you know, the beauty of it. Because I think there's something about choosing one nice thing 
that you really treasure, that maybe you've really been craving and you want it, but you didn't, couldn't afford it. Like, and I just bought some makeup. One item that I, I think I mentioned it in a previous video, that I really was rebelling against buying because I didn't want to spend $30 on a tube of lipstick. And then I eventually decided, you know, just buying that one thing was going to be a really lovely gift to myself. So that's, I think, how French women shop in that kind of thoughtful way where they everything that's a little luxury for them, even just a simple avocado or a simple, you know, two oranges. Instead of buying a big bag of 15 oranges that half of them get discarded or, or shared away or thrown away, you've got two really lovely oranges that you're going to enjoy. The second thing that Lisa suggests is eating outside. And that will help you to feel like a millionaire. I mean, you see the, you know, the balcony shots at the hotels with the people in very, obviously very expensive dresses and, and you know, cars pulling up. Um, you know, obviously they're maybe millionaires. I don't know. But, you know, but wealthy enough to be able to avoid, to be in a beautiful, you know, Monaco uh, balcony overlooking the sea. But anyway, the point is eating outside is just a, such a great gift to yourself. It's so lovely. I mean, I actually sometimes just open the window and push my table close to the window because I don't have a balcony. Or I will go outside with my thermos of coffee and my, you know, whatever, my little pot of, you know, in my um, container um, that I'm going to sit down by the lake and eat my, you know, whatever it is. Um, grilled cheese sandwich it could be. It doesn't matter what it is. But I'm going to go down to the lake. I'm going to sit by the, some cool breeze and with a nice drink of uh, tea in my thermos and make that, you know, an experience. And it tastes better. And it is essential and exciting to take a little packed lunch and go out and sit outside. If you've got a garden, why on earth are you not sitting out there eating your food? Even if it's cold, put your coat on, put a scarf on, go out and just hang out in the garden with your trees and the birds singing. Birds, by the way, I was watching an article on, or watching a video on this, that bird sounds are like they really affect your mental state that they actually calm you down significantly. I did never even thought about that. But anyway, you know, it's pure extravagance to go out and have a little packed picnic lunch somewhere and enjoy the outdoor eating experience. That will make you feel like a millionaire. Like candles. I love this one actually, um, because I think candles are like birds. They, they soften the heart and they just make you feel special. Even just sitting down at the table, just you, if you're living alone with your plate of food, even if it's just a TV dinner or what, something you just, you know, thrown together, but light a candle. Just get, you know, sort of absorbed by the light glowing around you, by the feeling that it gives you in your heart that you're warm and safe and cozy. And also the scent. I mean, there's some beautiful candles available now that you, you know, where the scent is just um, aligned to your perfume taste or to your, you know, your home decor. Um, it matches somehow your home decor. But just go ahead and light a candle. I mean, Lisa's really... Um, you know, a, a big candle fan, as am I. And also one little element that you can add is a glass of wine. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. It can be like, I always drink kombucha tea. I love, I'm in a kombucha tea kick at the moment. But, um, but you know, just a little drink of something special. It could be a non-alcoholic drink. It could be just a glass of water. It doesn't matter. Just sit with the candle, sip, a, sip some liquid. Could be a cup of tea or coffee. But, you know, no big expense. You know, but all the glamour. Dress up. I remember my friend Maureen and I used to do this all the time. We would always like for, I mean, for certain events like the Academy Awards, we would go out to um, uh, like a thrift store and buy the most luxurious, silly, fancy dress we could think of that we would never wear anywhere because where would I be wearing a strapless sequined evening dress? <laughs> and we'd buy this dress and then we'd go back to the house and dress up and then you know, put the makeup on and the hair and the whole thing and wear these dresses and watch the Academy Awards. Why not? I mean, that's the type of thing I think that makes you feel like a millionaire. Yes, you're not on the red carpet. You're not a movie star getting, you know, $5,000 um, a second for your appearance on, on a show, but you are feeling like a millionaire and that's all that matters. It's a feeling. What's So, I mean, you can create luxury in your life in the simplest ways. And if you've got a second go, I think, um, I think Lisa actually turned this into a little ebook. It's Lisa Dunkel, L-I-Z-A Dunkel, and she's put it on um, Kindle, I think. But it's just a whole series of the articles that she did for 60 and Me in, a, in an e-book on how to, um, how to, I think it's how to live like a millionaire on a, on a retirement budget. Just some ideas. Do you have any things that you do that make you feel like a millionaire?
please share because I would love honestly to add them to the article and just, you know, to, and, and continue to share the um, experiences that you have found work for you. So what makes, what small things make you feel like a millionaire? Leave your comments below and if you like this video, please like it. Just press the like button because that will uh, help um, YouTube to share it with other people. Comment help, and leave a comment. That always helps us too. And it gives people uh, an opportunity to get some feedback and uh, just chat, you know, just talk about what you've listened to and whether what you thought was useful. Yeah, leave a comment and respond to other people's comments. You know, have a conversation. It's, it's like, you know, what else are you doing today? Just take three minutes and do that. <laughs> We're here for each other. This is a 60 and me community of women who really care about one another. So that's another way that you can do it. Take good care, everybody. Have a fabulous day wherever you are in this beautiful world and feel like a millionaire, whatever you do. Take good care.